a life raft is a raft, they're often inflatable um, and they're used as a shelter um, in emergencies at sea. Definitely anyone going out on a yacht or a powerboat for any period of time should have a life raft if possible. Uh, people going offshore, then it's an absolute must. You do need to look at what you predominantly do, uh, deal with. So if you're day sailing where uh, land is going to be uh, is close, rescue services are going to be close at hand, then quite often a 24-hour life raft is going to be suitable for your requirements. Uh, for people who are going offshore, so further afield in uh, more remote environments where help is definitely going to take longer to reach them, then they do need to get an over 24-hour life raft. The key difference between those, so the life rafts are exactly the same, but it's all about the extra stuff you get with it. An under 24 life raft is sort of the basic fundamentals, so um, you'll have pyrotechnic flares in there, you'll have uh, paddles, emergency signalling devices, however you don't get food or water, so if you are going offshore then um, you need to be thinking about uh, food, you need to be thinking about water. Think about how many people are on the boat at a given time. If it's usually your family of four, so go for a four-man life raft. You don't want to be going for something much bigger than you need. You need to be thinking about um, can you heat that space with the amount of people in there. So in regard to that, it's like tents. You wouldn't have a massive tent because you wouldn't be able to warm up the, the space around you. The grab bag has uh, fundamental survival tools in, so it will have uh, pyrotechnic flares, it will have um, uh, the paddles, sea, uh, anti seasickness tablets. Um, so really those survival tools, um, things to aid your um, recovery, such as visual aids, uh, but also things to make you more comfortable in the life raft as well. Um, if you go for a 24 hour pack, then you start getting the food and water in there. The grab bag is the sort of the basics. You really want to customise that grab bag to, to suit you and the environment you're going. So things you might want to consider is buying uh, food packages. Um, these are really compact. They don't taste like much, but they are going to sustain you. Um, also take things such as um, reading glasses. Um, the, life raft does, the life raft does come with uh, instructions, so they're very useful to be able to read. Uh, medication, so inhalers if you're asthmatic, very important to have when you're um, uh, sort of away uh, from access to these. Um, other things, cash, a credit card, a uh, copy of your passport, all good things to have with you uh, in this situation. You do need to make sure that the firing line, um, uh, the painter, is secured to a strong point on the, on the boat before you do throw it over. Um, once it's in the water, take hold of that painter. There's going to be about nine metres um, of line there. Pull it in until you get resistance. When you do feel that resistance, give it a, a big hard pull and that's going to manually uh, activate the life raft. Um, so all the, the compressed gas in the cylinder is going to inflate the life raft um, and it'll be in the water. So essentially, after that, you're going to have a life raft on the end of a line, so don't let go. Uh, the second way a life raft can be activated is automatically, this is if you're using a HRU unit, so that is a hydrostatic release unit. You install it on the life raft. These are used in the event of um, if, the, if the, the vessel is sinking, once the, uh, the HRU gets beneath four metres of water, that water pressure is going to activate um, the unit which is going to cut the line and send the buoyant life raft to the service whilst activating it as well. Life rafts either come in a uh, container or a softer valise. If you're using the container option then um, you want to have it um, either uh, sort of mounted externally, so on the push pit rail, that means it's very easy to just release into the water, so minimal effort required to, to activate it. Um, if you are mounting it onto the deck, it's very important that you have it raised off the deck. Um, these have, the, the container has drain holes, so uh, they're designed for, um, uh, to let sort of elements in and out basically. So um, if you have it flat on the bottom, water may get in, but not necessarily come out, so do raise it up. Uh, the leases, um, these don't offer as much protection as a container. 
Um, so a couple of things you need to consider is that it does need to be stored in a, a dry area, so a dry locker. Um, also, uh, it needs to be uh, stored with, with nothing on top of it, so uh, uh, anchors or chains can definitely damage the, the internal life raft within it. Um, and the only way you're going to be able to tell if that's happened is in an emergency situation when the life raft's inflated. So it's, it's very important to consider where you actually do store or mount your life raft. Luckily, there's not many manufacturers, so it does keep it simple. Uh, the most common one is Hammer. They have a fantastic website, so uh, the website really does guide you through uh, the types of HRU units and also how to fit them. Uh, you'll commonly see a yellow one and a green one. Um, for uh, life rafts, smaller life rafts, so uh, between four person and 12 person, it's definitely the green one you want to consider. Um, these are lighter weight life rafts um, and the, the green HRU unit does have a, a weaker uh, sort of point to it, so it doesn't require as much oomph to, to break the uh, connection. If you have decided to go for a HRU unit, it's very important that you do follow the manufacturer's guidelines. Don't modify it anyway, don't add additional padlocks or anything like that because that is going to compromise uh, the life raft going off. Um, it's also very important to note that um, when securing your, uh, your life raft, do make sure that painter is attached to the weak point of the, uh, the HRU, um, otherwise you, you could look at your uh, life raft going down of the boat. If your life raft does go off accidentally, it's very important that you don't try repacking it yourself. Um, take it to a, a local approved service station um, and they will repack it for you. Um, if you do get a chance to see your life raft inflated, then that's fantastic and a uh, service station should be very accommodating for that, uh, to show you that as well. For recreational uh, vessels, then uh, most manufacturers will have a three-year uh, service requirement. Uh, when it comes to your, um, your service time, take it to a local uh, approved service centre. The so service engineers will pressure test the life raft, so they'll fully inflate it, they'll uh, visually check all components, uh, they'll also swap out any expired items as well, including pyrotechnics, so it's, it's very important. Um, at this point you can um, request additional items to be added uh, to the life raft um, where the service engineer can do so before professionally repacking.